All right, this question comes to us from Logan55Frey. And the question is, is VO2 max or lactate threshold a better predictor of success in CrossFit? I think to answer this, we're gonna have to go into some detail on what exactly VO2 max and what lactate threshold are. So first off, VO2 max is a measurement of oxygen utilization in the body. And it's a measure, it's in general, a non-specific measurement of oxygen utilization. How do we test it? We put someone on a treadmill or a bike and we have them do a ramping test. So essentially they get on the treadmill and every minute or 90 seconds, depending on what protocol you use, you increase the speed or you can increase the height of the treadmill and we measure the gases that are exchanged. So that gives us a measurement of exactly how much oxygen that athlete's using. I think VO2 max is a great measurement for measuring oxygen utilization, but it's not necessarily a great performance measurement. Uh, lactate threshold on the other hand is a measurement of the essential balance point between the production of lactate and the utilization of lactate in the energy systems. And typically people look at lactate threshold as sort of an endurance marker. So here's some of the problems that I think exist with VO2 or lactate threshold as benchmarks for CrossFitters. The reality is that CrossFit is a chaotic sport. And when you involve things like heavy 1RM lifts or you put uh, barbell cycling in the middle of a workout, all of a sudden you disqualify VO2 max and lactate threshold as markers of performance for these athletes. Now on the flip side, if you look at the endurance aspects of the sport, like at the CrossFit Games this past year, we had long swims, runs, we had events that mixed running and uh, strongman elements and obstacle courses. When it comes to those things, typically I would say that lactate threshold would be a better predictor of endurance performance. That's pretty much borne out in the literature that VO2 max is a poor predictor of performance and lactate threshold tends to be a better one, but that only applies to the endurance or monostructural endurance aspects of the sport. As soon as you start to mix in elements like wall balls and barbells and those things, I think that these become uh, subpar measurements of performance in the sport and that the best way to predict performance in the sport is by testing the sport itself and getting performance metrics there rather than using these types of proxies to get performance metrics. But some things that I would say is that an athlete to perform well in the sport of CrossFit would most likely have to have a high VO2 max and a high lactate threshold. Possessing both of those qualities is something that will allow someone to perform well in the sport but I don't think either are a predictor of CrossFit performance because there's athletes out there that have really high VO2 maxes and really high lactate thresholds who just aren't very good CrossFitters, whether it's because they lack some of the skills that are involved in the sport or, you know, one of the things that can drive up VO2 max is having high degrees of muscle mass that drives up absolute VO2 max. An, an athlete that's 260 pounds, even though they may have a high absolute VO2 max, it's not necessarily going to be a good CrossFitter. So between the two, I would say lactate threshold is probably a better predictor of CrossFit endurance performance, but that neither would be a great predictor of uh, CrossFit performance itself. When I created Training Think Tank, I wanted it to be just that, a think tank, a group of people that gets together and challenges each other's ideas on training. So what you watch in this video is one coach's beliefs. The other coaches and myself may or may not agree with what was said, but we're okay with that because we wanna facilitate a discussion about training in the market.